All right, so this morning I went to One Million Cups. And man, I don't know what the heck I ate or if it was the zinc supplement that I took this morning, but my stomach was just not feeling well at all. Sorry, one sec, let me mute. Um, I'm always watching Bloomberg TV, live TV for free whenever I'm working. And I always have it on the background. Keep up to date with current market situations and uh, current news breaking news etc but yeah I went to 1 million cups and I just could not really focus on the presenter at all um, I didn't get to ask any questions just because my stomach felt horrible um, I powered through almost decided to cancel my one to one that I had after 1 million cups but I decided to stick through it and then I started feeling a little bit better and I was able to able to have a one to one with an, a lady from Aflac um, I'm I have moral dilemmas, I guess, about gap health insurance, about supplemental health insurance policies, because unfortunately those plans have the highest commissions. And what I see a lot of agents do is um, set people up with a high deductible plan, and then you know that doesn't pay very well, maybe it pays 20% commission at the very most, we'll say. Um, but then they'll, they'll say, you know, look, look at this plan, you have a super high deductible, you know, can you afford a unexpected four, five, six, seven, even eight thousand dollar out of pocket sometimes? And everyone says no, and so they say, well, for just an extra fifty dollars a month, I can get you a gap plan, whether it's a critical accident, a hospital indemnity plan, a cancer, heart attack plan, whatever it is. Um, sometimes a combination of all those. I can get you this plan for fifty bucks a month, uh, and then you know that should help offset the cost of your deductible, they say. However, I have two issues with that. One, the extra $50 can be better spent going towards the, your base health insurance plan anyway. And so then you have better uh, you have better coverage just right out the gate instead of doing a gap plan because uh, gap plans are usually only um, cover specific incidents, incidences or specific diseases and you'd just be better off increasing your base health insurance plan. You know, putting that $50 extra a month towards your monthly premium of your plan, to then that will lower your deductible, obviously. Usually a good amount. You know, $50 a month is no small, small amount. Um, also, my other issue with GAP plans is, you know, I just had a surgery on my elbow um, the week of Thanksgiving last year of 2019. And, you know, I set up payment plans for, um, for the facility, for the, um, for the surgery, you know, for the doctor's fee, uh, and mostly for my physical therapy because um, my health plan doesn't cover physical therapy that, that, for that extensive period of time. And I for, unfortunately didn't foresee that I'd have to have occupational therapy technically. Um, instead of physical therapy. I didn't foresee that I'd have to have occupational therapy twice a week, you know, for the next year. Um, so that was an unexpected expense with the surgery because something else went wrong that the doctor didn't foresee having, um, him having to fix, or the surgeon, I guess, didn't foresee having to fix. And so I look at that, you know, some of these payment plans that I set up are $50 a month, $75 a month, and so I look at that and I say, well, you know, I could have been paying for a gap plan this whole time, um, in addition to my base health insurance plan, for about that amount. And none of those gap plans would have covered the situation. I didn't stay in the hospital. I was just outpatient surgery. Um, no plan, no gap plans that I've seen so far really truly cover anything with um, therapy after a procedure. So occupational therapy that I do wouldn't be covered. Um, it wasn't a cancer issue or, you know, it wasn't anything wrong with the heart or critical illness. So the $50 a month payment in the, um, for a gap plan would have just gone to a waste and I'd still be stuck making monthly payments to the facility, to the doctor, um, to the therapist, etc. So uh, the, the one-to-one, I, I challenged her on that and she she agreed with me for the most part but 
yeah, in my opinion, I still think there are definitely uh, some gap plans that are worth it. Um, I don't think that hers are are one of them. Um, also, some gap plans like Aflax only give you a discount if you um, if you are if you belong to a group. And right now, my business is focused mostly on individual health insurance, so I don't think that um, I'll be selling any Aflac products ever. Um, but yeah, it's interesting just to to learn more about their products. They weren't as bad as I had originally thought, uh, although she did not show me any prices, so they very well um, could be just ridiculously unaffordable because the plans are pretty good. Um, I just don't know how much they cost. But uh, but yeah, I had a one to one. I had a one to one after one million cups. It's a lot of ones this morning with uh, with that lady. Then I went home, still home, obviously. Um, I was responding to some emails. Um, what else? Oh, I got a, a random phone call. Always answer your phone, even if you don't know the number. Um, you know, worst case scenario, you you waste five seconds, and you hear that's a robocall, you just hang up. Um, but I get so many calls from random numbers. A lot of them are garbage, but also a lot of them are referrals, luckily. And I got a referral from another referral from All Care Dental. They're out at 156th and Maple in Omaha. They have some really cool new technology. I just went to them actually for the first time about a month ago. Uh, I got a new referral and I sent her, um, I sent that lady my, my proprietary link that kind of is a questionnaire that gets all the information I would need uh, to do a quote for the individual. So I, I make it very simple for my clients and for any prospects. I send them a link to fill out um, typical information I might need, name, date of birth, um, gender, etc. You know, the personal information, but then also um, something else that I include in that is what type of coverage they're looking for. You know, because there's no, there's no best solution for health insurance at the moment with the current marketplace, um, the current market, no pun intended, I guess, with marketplace, but with the current market of health insurance, there's no perfect solution. And so in that questionnaire, I ask people, you know, are you looking for just catastrophic coverage? Um, are you looking for comprehensive full coverage? Do you care more about having the lowest monthly premium or having better coverage? Um, even if it might cost a little more, you know, if you're married, I use that term, if you're married to to your doctor, if you're adamant that you're not going to switch, you know, if you prefer a certain network, things like that. And so it's a, it's a simple link. And it's a form that I created. And I send out, I email it or text it to, um, to client, to prospects, I guess, technically. And it's all encrypted. So no one else is able to access their information or see, you know, see their private, their private records. But um, after they complete that, that I'm able to um, to do my homework on my end, I say, and do my homework and do the shopping around for them and then reconvene with them, usually within 24 hours, unless it's a really compl complex case. Um, but then I reconvene with them and show them a couple different options that they can do for their insurance. And so um, I actually just saw that she had already responded, so that's perfect. She responded within an hour to that form. Um, but yeah, I'm just doing some busy work. I'm, I had some questions about a new telemedicine plan that I just got approved to sell. Um, so I was reaching out to that broker representative at that company, um, trying to bring telehealth, telemedicine to, uh, to nursing homes, independent and assisted living, um, to the clients of caregivers, you know, people receiving home health care at home. Um, I was trying to see how I go about different the different avenues that um, that the payment methods can be. You know, if the if the company can pay for those plans for their clients, I don't know if there's any legality behind that, um, et cetera. So I was asking asking the broker um, the broker help guy, the broker advisor, I guess, to um, give me some pointers on that. So because my stomach still wasn't feeling too hot, I decided to skip my Wednesday lunch networking group, which was a bummer, but it gave me extra time to um, to do computer work and just kind of relax at home, eat, eat a good lunch, had some salmon, um, some salmon and veggies, typical lunch. But um, what was I going to say? 
oh yeah, I use the computer time to uh, um, to just catch up on current events in Omaha and um, post about um, about some new trends and some new um, some data, I guess, new trends and data on Omaha and on our city. And so that's what I was doing um, during this computer time, you know, posting that relevant information about Omaha on Project 402's pages because uh, it's just very fitting. Anything relevant in the Omaha news, definitely I like to try to share on Project 402's um, Facebook pages or Facebook page. Um, and also I'll share it to the 500 Millennials of Omaha Facebook group because the, those are the, I mean, to the younger people of the city who who, in my opinion, really actually care about the city. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of young people in Omaha that don't care too much about the developments going on um, or statistics about, you know, upcoming types of jobs that Omaha is um, attracting, things like that. But um, the people that are in that Facebook group, for the most part, I've seen really care about the future of our city and really care about um, just finding new relevant information about the about things going on um, so that's also something that I shared oh and I also updated my LinkedIn settings because every time someone mentioned me in a comment every time someone messaged me you know a private message on LinkedIn I would receive an email and that just drove me nuts so I finally got that figured out um, I got my new computer on Black Friday and I still haven't figured out how to print double-sided though with it which sounds so stupid I know there's settings. I've gone into the settings. I've tried what I think is everything, and my computer just still will not print double-sided. Um, so I figured out an issue with LinkedIn, but I still have an issue with printing with my very expensive laptop, and I need help with that still. All right, now I'm heading off. Um, I'm heading out. One of my friends from college, him and I took a bunch of real estate classes together. He's a great guy. Uh, my girlfriend and I actually ran into him when we were shopping apartments about a year ago or so. Um, but he reached out to me on Facebook, safety first, safety first, excuse me, seatbelt, some shades to block out the sun that doesn't exist today apparently. Uh, but he reached out to me on Facebook a little bit ago. <laughs> I say safety first and then I start driving, that's fine. Um, because he's like, hey man, uh, I need to start getting into some networking groups. I work for a new company now, and I um, they give me kind of like flex days and flex time to help do some branding and advertising for them through networking groups, and he doesn't know where to begin. And I think he must know that, I, uh, that I'm pretty well connected in the community. Turn right onto 59th Avenue. Yeah, yeah. Turn left onto Grover Street. Okay. Now you guys know where I'm at. Um, but he, his office is way out west, like 180th and Dodge, I think. I think it's Core Bank, I don't remember. Sorry about that. About Jarvis here in the background, Siri, Jarvis, whatever. My chauffeur, my GPS. Um, but he, yeah, he got fired from his old um, landlord slash um, leasing agent position, so that was pretty sad to hear. But he, um, sorry. But, but yeah, um, so I'm meeting up with him. I try to stay east of 120th at the very furthest west if possible. I think it's important, especially in Omaha, to promote um, the, the city, the city core, East Omaha. Um, so even 120th is a little west, a little more west than I like to go. Um, but I'm meeting up with him. Hopefully they got some coffee in their office because I could use some caffeine. Uh, but should be able to help them out. I'm excited. Just got done meeting with my friend. Um, he works at Access Bank out at 180th and about Dodge. Uh, his name's Colvin, go hit him up if you are not happy with your current bank situation. He's a great dude. Uh, but yeah, I give him a lot of pointers on networking, different groups, um, which ones that I thought he could benefit from most being in his particular industry. Uh, it was also good to just catch up with him. He's a great dude. Um, but yeah, now I'm heading out to a ribbon cutting for the Greater Omaha Chamber, and I will talk to you guys after that. Hey. Hey. 
So you guys just saw a quick glimpse of the ribbon cutting. That's the only video footage that I got from that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to be better at that. But I have, that's a room for improvement, I guess. I have lots of room for improvement. Um, but yeah, that was pretty fun. It was a little weird. I walked in and I didn't really know. I don't plan ahead or look at my schedule too far in advance. This was a, a, a bridal and prom dress shop. They also had tuxedo rentals technically. Um, so a little weird, interesting, but as always, I saw lots of people there that I see networking around other places and I got to kind of strengthen some relationships um, that I met, strengthen some relationships with people um, that I network with, which is always a good thing. Now I just pulled up to Granite City and um, I'm gonna go see my friend and help him out and participate in his, um, in his campaign kickoff. And that's Tim Davis, everyone. All right, I'm just getting home from Tim Davis's campaign kickoff. Uh, it was a really good time. Met um, met a couple people actually, and I reconnected with some good friends in the Republican Party. Um, so that's always a good time meeting with them and talking about the politics, I guess, calling it what it is, with people who are in the same mental um, mental wavelength as you. However, we did get into a very controversial discussion about mental illness. Um, I thought that was pretty interesting. It was definitely unexpected. Um, but yeah, just arrived home from that. It's currently uh, five minutes till 8 p.m. I gotta go home and do some, um, I gotta go inside and respond to some emails and text messages um, since I haven't really been on my phone at all today. Um, so that'll be, um, that'll be the majority of the rest of my night. I've been listening to a lot of David Goggins and Jocko Willink, I think is his last name, Willink. Um, if you don't know who they are, you need to go follow them. David Goggins just alone is a freaking animal. Um, dude's broken tons of Guinness Book World Records um, with different, different fitness challenges, number of pull-ups uh, within 24 hours. Um, most miles ran um, in X amount of time, things like that. He's a beast. Go follow him. Um, but what I was saying is, I'm listening to, excuse me, listening to a lot of their videos uh, on YouTube and a lot of interviews with them, especially Joe Rogan's and David Goggins interview. Um, and so when I got home about eight o'clock, I think it was, I just said, um, I decided to just go work out and stretch out my elbow. Uh, instead of getting to work right away. So now it's about 9.30 after I was done working out and showered. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna say goodnight to the girlfriend real quick and then start on emails and following up on text messages and then hopefully get to bed by um, no later than midnight for sure. Uh, for everyone who was curious and wanted to see it, um, forewarning, if you're queasy, easy, look away. But this is my um, my scar from my surgery. So when I say I am working out and exercising and stretching my elbow, um, that is why I need to rebuild myself because uh, I haven't been able to be active really in four plus months now. Um, actually for more than that because my elbow hurt for a year before my surgery so I couldn't really push myself like I wanted to. Um, I still obviously can't. I mean, I can't even really lift 20 pounds yet with my right arm, so that sucks. So my workouts are very much limited, but still worked out and exercised and stretched for about an hour, and I took a nice hot shower, shaved a little bit, um, and did more stretches in the in the hot shower, you know, in the hot water, loosened up my um, loosened up my joint, and my elbow. Uh, but now I'm gonna say goodnight to the girlfriend and get to work. All right, followers, it is 11.05. I uh, just finished up doing emails and text message responses, and now I'm gonna sit down, drink some tea, sit next to my diffuser, uh, and read for at least a half an hour. After that, I'll be heading to bed, um, so I will see you all tomorrow.